Hi and welcome to week 24 of U.S. history. So this week uh, we're going to delve into some key moments and decisions that have left their mark on the U.S.'s uh, trajectory from military triumphs to diplomatic initiatives and economic policies. Uh, our discussions and our lessons will illuminate the multifaceted nature of America's past and its enduring impact on the present. So um, first we'll begin with uh, World War I, where the American uh, expeditionary forces played a crucial role in securing victory for the Allies. Deployed to the Western Front under the command of General John Pershing, the AEF bolstered Allied forces with fresh troops, advanced weaponry, and an unwavering resolve. Their arrival tipped the balance of power in favor of the Allies hastening the end of the war and solidify Americans, America's emergence as a global superpower. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll then turn our attention to President Woodrow Wilson's 14 points. This was a visionary plan for post-war peace and reconstruction. Released in January of 1918, the 14 points outlined Wilson's vision for a new world order based on principles such as self-determination, free trade, disarmament, and collective security. These ideals laid the groundwork for the negotiation of the Treaty of Versailles and served as a beacon of hope for a war-weary world. At the Paris Conference of 1919, world leaders convened to shape the terms of peace and chart the course of the post-war era. Central to the conference was the negotiation of the Treaty of Versailles, which imposed harsh penalties on Germany and redrew the map of Europe. While the treaty sought to achieve lasting peace, its punitive measures and failure to address underlying grievances sowed the seeds of future conflict, foreshadowing the tumultuous years to come. So turning to the aftermath of World War I, President Wilson faced a pivotal decision regarding U.S. participation in the League of Nations. A key provision of the Treaty of Versailles, the League aimed to promote international cooperation and prevent future wars through collective security measures. However, Wilson's efforts to secure Senate ratification of the treaty was thwarted by isolationist sentiment and partisan politics, ultimately leading to America's refusal to join the League. And finally, we'll examine how the policies of Presidents Warren G. Harding and Calvin Coolidge fueled economic growth and prosperity in the 1920s. Embracing a philosophy of limited government intervention and free market economics, the Harding and Coolidge administration, administrations pursued policies aimed at reducing taxes, deregulating industries, and promoting business expansion. These measures, coupled with technological advancements and a booming stock market, ushered in a period of unprecedented economic growth known as the Roaring Twenties. So, to conclude, um, the contributions of the American Expeditionary Force, President Wilson's 14 points, the decisions made at the Paris Peace Conference, U.S. participation in the League of Nations, and the economic policies of Harding and Coolidge are all integral chapters in the tapestry of U.S. history. So by examining these topics in more detail, we'll gain a deeper understanding of the forces that have shaped America's past and continue to influence its present and its future. So I want to thank you, and I look forward to seeing you and working with you all in class. Thank you.